So when I was in high school, I really wanted to be a journalist. And by the time I got to college, like most college students, I ended up changing my major to physics. So over the years, I've been trained as a physicist. I received my master's from Fisk University. Um, and currently, I'm a PhD student at Harvard um, in the physics department. But my research is actually on studying viruses. Now, some of you may be wondering why a physicist would be interested in studying viruses, especially since we've invested so many resources in vaccinations and ways to actually get rid of them. Well, the thing is, we can actually learn a lot about viruses, especially physicists. We can learn a lot about viruses and other biological systems um, because they allow us to learn more about our world as a whole. So many physicists study incredibly small systems like particles um, or very large systems like our universe. But we can expand our knowledge of physics by actually studying the complex systems that exist around us, like viruses. So what exactly is a virus? So viruses are infectious agents that contain a nucleic acid or an RNA or DNA genome that's surrounded by an organized set of captive proteins. When a virus needs to reproduce itself, it will attach itself to a host, a cell, like the cells that we have in our body, and inject its nucleic acid into the host cell. The host cell then produces more viral proteins and RNA, and that viral protein and RNA actually spontaneously forms new infectious virus. This seemingly magical um, creation of new viruses from these RNA and proteins is actually considered a process called self-assembly. And we want to better understand what that process is. If you've seen uh, the formation of um, rock candy or those beautiful patterns that you've uh, seen in snowflakes, you've seen the results of self-assembly. And we considered a self-assembled system to be one in which you have a uh, disorganized or disordered set of particles or um, components like our viral RNA and our uh, proteins that spontaneously come together and form an organized structure without any external ex um, assistance. And that's actually pretty amazing because this happens all the time in nature. And so even though I just gave you an example about uh, snowflakes and, and rock candy, and you see many examples of self-assembly around us, the self-assembly of viruses is actually very complicated. Um, but it still has to follow a very similar uh, set of principles that we see in snowflakes and uh, a similar set of principles that we see in uh, rock candy uh, formations, if you, if you guys have, have seen that as well. Um, and in my lab, we're actually trying to better understand what exactly those principles are, actually. And so by studying small viruses, so in our lab, we study small spherical viruses, uh, specifically the MS2 virus, to get a better understanding of how self-assembly occurs in these simple viruses. And by studying the self-assembly of simple viruses, we can gain more intuition and understanding about the self-assembly of larger, more complex viruses like HIV. Although viruses are a very small set of the many self-assembled systems that exist in our universe, by studying these viruses, we can actually learn a lot more about self-assembly as a whole. It has many applications. Um, but we can also learn a little bit about nature's mechanisms for designing and creating complex structures, and that includes birds, that includes us. Um, and who knows, we may actually learn a little bit more about what's happening in our corner of the universe, too. Thank you. <laughs>